So you've heard, listened to it for a long time. You've listened to us for a long time. Yeah. How long was it happening? Exactly. Since when he was had a spiky head with red oh, shirt. Oh wow, that's a long time. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spiky, spiky head. Yeah. 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 When was that happening? Why didn't I know you then? I know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think you've been going. You've around. always known me. It's been long enough since you've heard. In many forms. <laughs> yeah, I had a. I was wearing hats back then, right? Yes. Yeah, hats. Yeah, a lot of hats. Have you heard that kind of joke? Past lives matter. Past lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Past lives matter. <laughs> Only my past lives matter. <laughs> yeah, right. That's good. So it's, has it been, has it proven to be helpful? Y yes. Oh, yes. good. That's all. So you travel a little lighter throughout the day. You don't take yourself so seriously. Yeah. I studied less about this material after mm -hmm. listening to you. Eh? I studied less about this material oh, after good. listening yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it has its point, you know, where you can read it and stuff. And then, you can almost feel it out when it's time. It's because usefulness can be unhelpful. It can turn into unhelpfulness. Yeah, it's just it's just a matter of uh, a lot of times people overstay their welcome, so to speak. So mm -hmm. it's good to feel it out and then um, and have faith in that in that uh, in your gut, so to speak. And then when it pans out. Let there be a validation of it, so that you're moving, the action figure is moving to perhaps there's a better way, trusting something infinite rather than finite self, yeah? So that's really based on uh, the trusting finite self is the believing in the thoughts, yeah? So you're moving away from believing the thoughts, because they're not yours, first of all, but, and the thoughts are going to continue. As long as like the electricity is on and the popcorn maker is plugged in, it's gonna pop popcorn. <laughs> That's just how it goes, in my experience. Now, it can get lesser the less it does, but it's even more more uh, valuable when the uh, it's habitual. The attraction to the thoughts being concerned, and the attraction doesn't come from the thought, it comes from that they're about you. Yeah, so the attraction is sort of given over to the thought, but it doesn't come from the thought. Yeah, so there's an identification that the thoughts are somehow yours or about you, and that's the attraction. So, like this, we used to use the example of, uh, you know, I'm sitting here supposedly doing a talk. This will be more like a fireside chat tonight. And, uh, and, but there's a gal, let's say, in the other room leading something, you know. And, uh, and I'm interested in her in a, in a carnivorous way, so to speak. <laughs> Let me move myself then. I'm supposed to be in the other room. Yeah, exactly. So let's say, for, let's say Amelia was in there, and I hadn't met Amelia yet, but I really had a a lot of ideas about already meeting Amelia or being entertained, yeah. And, uh, and so I'm keen on listening to Amelia because I'm hoping she says, I like that guy leading the, the other workshop, or, you know, I like that guy Paul, because I don't want to just go cold up to Amelia. No, it's a little too scary. I'm, I'm, there's a fear of rejection, so I'll just play it safe and let that ship pass me by. But if I have a, if the bed is hedged, you know, it's out of, I'll go, oh, oh, how are you? I heard about your workshop. Would you like to do some workshops with me? <laughs> Whatever. And then, you know, hopefully it would take off from there. So I'm listening to her very intently while I'm supposedly doing this. But on a certain level, 
the agenda sees meeting Amelia much more important than delivering a message or anything like that. So it'll be very difficult to pull that attention off Amelia in the other room. But if I finally hear Amelia say, hey, I like that guy, Matt, and I'm not Matt, I'm going to lose interest in that conversation. It's not like I'm going to have to work at it or it's going to be pulled back. I'm just going to lose interest in it. Basically, because it's not about me. Yeah, she likes someone else, so that's it. So I'm not interested in it anymore. And so what happens? The interest and attention is is once again available to the biggest bidder. You know, unfortunately, usually the one that's running the auction is the mental state. But you know, it's it's available because it's yeah. So the point is, uh, how could you? How can you see those movements towards and away from as not actually moving what you are at all? Yeah, because what happens is people still believe it's them that's moving towards and are moving away. So basically, their stability or the, or the constancy of the uh, solution is still up for grabs because if I get into something, I'll forget. And then I'll have, yes, so there, it, there's still a, you got to see that. So you, the first thing you see is come pretty easy, but then the second one may not be as easy to see, but it's helpful to see it because then you won't be, when there's a movement to or away, yeah, or th if there's distance or time added, you won't see it as you or about you. You'll just see it as mo mental movements, you know, like a, leaving like a, you know, if you move fast enough, there would be like a comet's tail, you know? There would be something, you'd see a trail, so to speak. So all that's going on, but still it doesn't, it doesn't, there's no convincing that you're that which is moving and then it would be better if I stopped moving, yeah? So I want to move towards that, but I want, it's, it's, it's just, the, the, the attention is now captured in that, yeah? So if you see that, the first one, then you see the second one, then you're on to something, because now your the condition isn't based on your seeming condition. Yeah, your seeming condition starts fitting around the condition. Yeah, which works much better than trying to fit, fit the condition around your condition. <laughs> <laughs> So, and you've tried it a lot. So now, once you get it, once the horse is in front of the car, because it hasn't been that many, many times, you feel a difference, there's a different feeling, yeah? And then that feeling is like, hey, humbly you're on to something. So now you realize, Jesus, it isn't an interest. Interest is actually a deterrent in a lot of ways, yeah? And yet I can't lose interest because that would be interest. Yeah, so I see the warning signs, but then the system will reinforce by going, okay, I've got to set out and lose interest in that. But that would be interest in that in a certain way, just the opposite way of wanting to lose interest. Yeah, so it's the same thing. It's like you're still, you're still uh, throwing the coin of the realm, you know. You know, it's, it's heads, tails, it's just the same, same coin. So now you see that, you know, and it, how many times do you need to see it? Maybe once, maybe none, maybe a hundred times. But when you do see it, the, the, the intimation of what our nature really is, it, is sort of uh, pinged by seeing what it's not, yeah? So by seeing what it's not, I get a sense of what I am. So like Jesus would say, or supposedly said, you're in this world, so now you get a ping, you're not in this world. Well, how could that, what would that, what would that look like? Well, you're not, in, you're not of time, you know, you're in this world of time, but you're not of time, yeah? You're not of separation, you're not of things. All right, wow. So, but I didn't arrive there by saying, I'm not a thing, I'm not of time. That doesn't go anywhere. I see there's a there's a allowing an identification to land. Yes, you know there's separation, there's 
I think I'm different than you, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes to him, you're not of that. So it doesn't deny it, it negates it, which is different. Denying it doesn't work, yeah? Denying it gives more life to it than ever. Negation works. So you, it's not like we usually use it. It's not like, I'm not that, it's I'm not that. It's just a fact, yeah? So now, that which, and the more and more you go this way, the more relaxing it is. Because you see all that combines to be what you call you, you know, interest, attention, concentrating, vigilance, all this, all these callings to, to, to hear that note aren't, they don't work, yeah? The fundamental thing is you can't get around the fact that you are that, yeah? Not as what you're not, but as the, when you see what you're not, that's what you find out. You find out what you are, and then you see the futility of trying to find out what I am from what I'm not. Everything, all the little cryptic statements make total sense once you're on, once you see the, the, the problem from the solution, yeah? Instead of trying to find the solution as the problem, you see that as a problem from the solution. And it doesn't really, it's like I say a lot, it's not a call to arms, it's a disarming uh, recognition, you know? You see the futility of, because <laughs> any little bit of effort really basically takes it away from, seemingly, away. Every effort to f get to what it is, is a, really a way of validating it's far from what it is. Yeah, so it, you, you realize the fundamental thumb torture is, uh, you know, reality attempting to attain reality. Yeah. It just doesn't make, and then how would that ever even take off is obviously reality must be, be believing it's in the act of being identified as something else. And then it has a concept of reality that it wants to attain. Because it would think it would give me, give it all the qualities that it actually inherently has, but as what it's not. So it has this desire to attain reality as Paul. But when you see, when you see you're not Paul, there's no uh, desire isn't a big deal in that. Yeah, desire doesn't have much role in it. You can't desire what you are. <laughs> Only from what you're not, you are it. So it, it's not like I, I'm gonna. I hope I constantly desire what you know. If you see, being is a different than knowing and grasping and studying and maybe having and then losing. It's different. Being is a much more relaxed uh, condition because it is. <laughs> It just tames a lot of the imaginary beasts. Yeah. It doesn't like, you know, kill or anything. It's just you loss of interest. It really is the key. So you lose interest in all the shenanigans that you were you were believing were going to take you somewhere, but really were just reinforcing that you were somewhere else. So, yeah. So wanting to get somewhere, the mythical somewhere, is reinforcing an imaginary place as being real. How's that gonna work? Yeah, so you get that sketch notice, and so, you know, hey, I can't, the gun can't be used as a tool, it's just better put down. <laughs> just like put it, and then, of course, this can put it down, but you put it down by realizing you're not this. Just like that idea of, you know, that which is playing God could never quit playing God because that would be playing God. But that which is God can lose interest in that which is playing God. <laughs> yeah. And when God loses interest in that which is playing God, it can see through the God play. Yeah. Yeah. And there wasn't any effort or battle. You know, you didn't have to have the right gear to go into battle with it. It's just, you see it. And it's really more of an inclusiveness than anything else. You just see all of this as part and parcel of what's coming up, yeah. Why is it that we 
Because why? Because we're looking through a bifocal lens, so we see black and white, good and bad. This is this is worthy of hatred. This is worthy of desire. You know, we're seeing this all day. We're blinded by the tunis, yeah, and. And then to a China, we use the two-ness to look for the oneness is either, is the hugest blindness, yeah, because you are what's looking. So you're blind to that by all the looking. It's so insane, yeah. So I don't think you can just leap into this. You hear it or you get whacked by it or something happens, but let's say you hear it, yeah. You hear it and then, uh, It has its little reverberations, and then that which you're not reacts, and then you start seeing the failedness of all the reactions of that which you're not, especially concerning what it is. You just see the failedness of a system. Yeah. And now maybe your sights get lowered, you know, instead of, you know, enlightenment, I'm looking for a, you know, a good latte. A, a place that serves verb just opened on Clement and on Guelo got me very excited, much more so than enlightenment. Because <laughs> I can actually get the coffee. <laughs> so my, you know, <laughs> my goals are meager. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know, it just works. This works better. Yeah. The last thing you don't, the last thing I want is Paul to be serious about something. <laughs> That's, that doesn't go well for Paul or the, whatever it's serious about. <laughs> it's better, yeah, keep Paul downsize its goals, you know. No, no, no transcend, that doesn't work. No benefit, no, it doesn't work. This, just, you know, diet from all that and then get used to just, you know, grits or something, something you can grab on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so the message is so funny, you're attempting to just imply a feeling, like a flavor more than anything. Yeah. Because you have the flavor, it's there. It's already, it's known already, it's beyond knowing, it's being. And so, like the, it, it, instead of like a gale force hurricane, you know, a light, slight little breeze goes better. Yeah, just a little, yeah. And then you'll see it during the week while you're living. You'll see, uh, you know, the fabrication, the machination of this place. Yeah. You don't have to see the engine itself. It leads to the recognition it's manufactured by seeing through the holes. Like, you remember that movie, The Matrix, when the, the mainframe supposedly one would have a glitch, like the cat, they'd see a cat going by a doorway and then it would do it again. Mm -hmm. And that would give you a sign, hey, the mate, it's rebooting again, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you'd see these things. Well, there's tons of those. There's tons of those opportunities all day. Because a lot of times the selfing stops and you're still here. <laughs> I mean, the, the narrator will stop, but the audience is still there. Like we never left, we never arrived. It's with just that, you know. So uh, I don't know how many ways it can be intimated or implied, but I don't think it takes that many. You know, because if you get tapped on the shoulder a few times, then there's it, there's a leap, yeah. The mind is like that hundredth monkey phenomenon. I really believe it. You know, you hear satsang over and over again, but then one night maybe a uh, satsang, maybe it doesn't even have to be a satsang, you know. There's a leap, the mind leaps. It doesn't go, okay, I went to five satsangs, now I'm gonna get five satsangs worth of effect. It doesn't go that way. It could be like five minutes of hearing it, and then it could be a huge leap. It could just go, and then, of course it's not of time, you know, so it's, 
what would look like would take a long time and, and because it's already so, it doesn't have to take any time, yeah? So you get these intimations and then maybe there's a critical mass that it even changes the action figure. The action figure has now recognized its own limitations, yeah? It's recognized it's not capable of embracing what is. That's not its programming, not its job. It can be an expression and it can observe shit, but it's not, it can't grok that which it truly is. It's, not, it's out of its, it's above its pay scale. So, okay. So now acceptance comes over this, in my experience, and then, you know, all those ways acceptance can, or expressions acceptance can trigger, like a compassion, you know, an understanding of the futility of it, forgiveness, all these things, yeah? Not from you, but just available, actually for it, really, yeah? So, to me, it was like an urban renewal project that kept getting funded, because I saw so much wrong with this, and I would have probably kept seeing tons of wrong shit with it, yeah? And I realized all the work I ever did uh, really didn't move much. <laughs> So I, did. I mean, the payoff cost ratio was way off. There was a lot of cost, not much payoff. And then the payoff didn't stay. You'd have to keep do more cost and then with a little less, or actually less payoff. You know, and it was like a bad deal, so to speak. And I could see it as a slavery, really. That's what, exactly how it felt. I felt like disbelieving in time, and in the action figure is a form of slavery. Yeah. And so, I heard the satsangs and whatever, and, uh, and I'm a real believer in knowing when is enough's enough. Yeah. You don't want to overdo it. I mean, hopefully we have a community now, so we can all go to dinner and everything, but I'm sure most of us in this room aren't really looking for anything when they come in this room except to go to G uh, B Star afterwards. That's fucking wise. Yeah. Start acting like there's nothing to get. Because that's the fact. Yeah. <laughs> you'll just be you'll be available now. Because so much is withhold withheld and like put into an interest bank account. So I'm not gonna I'm not interested. I'm interested, you know. I'm gonna, I want to fucking invest all my interest in that. It's like a spiritual stock market. It's going to have a giant collapse. Yeah, you can be stuck with nothing. That would be great. That would be perfect for it. You hope that because every system here relied upon its greatest service is to show us it's failed. Yeah, so it has a great service by failing us. So what? So that you'll finally realize you are what you're looking for. Yeah, you are what is looking now, yeah. So what I've found out from entertaining this, most of the downloads I get are just pointing out the little traps that the system springs, yeah. And the fact is, it only has maybe three or four big traps because most people get caught in the first one. And they get stuck in a little hellish <laughs> ring. They do. I've watched it. They're still believing it's them that's going towards something, or, you know what I mean? The, the agitation still implies it's you that's agitated. They don't see it as surface winds, yeah? Not moving anything. So there's, you know, they get the first lead, uh, ring, but they, they're entrenched in the second ring. So the thing doesn't have to get that supply. It's got a few that work quite well. So if you can get through, see the fourth or fifth trap, then you can be like a free range character then, or a non-character. <laughs> There's a lot of space. <laughs> After, so you see how it traps us, yeah? how we reignite the system in a subtle way trying to get out of it to the point that we're uh, trying to be a non-self as a self. We want to take the non-self qualities and apply it to us so that we can travel better as a thing. 
with a little more no thing. <laughs> see it. If you see it, it's not you. Yeah, so then then there'll be a little space, and then when it appears and it gets it's got to, it's got an outfit it's claiming to be you, you see it's not you. You catch it a few times, it doesn't have an infinite amount of some uniforms. <laughs> you'll run out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you'll see the emperor, emperor has no clothes. You'll finally see it. It's not going to go on forever. Yeah. yeah. And the delay between like rings are long. Yeah. If you catch, if you see it like on the third one, it's a long period. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it extends in time more. Like the first is like an aha, or you know, like oh that resonates, but then it's you know, the tuning fork gets claimed, whatever. So yeah, so this is more like aha, and then there's a nice like a, like a plane, like a field of, of pause, so to speak. I mean, like if you go hey, there's no echo for quite a while. <laughs> it's like. A realization in that one, in the mind then, the realization sort of like puts out a ping like sonar and it doesn't hit anything. It just goes on and on and on and you get the, you get the hugeness of mind by the realization appearing in it. It's not mind having a realization, the realization is appearing in mind and the ping never hits, it's all like dropping something and it never hits the bottom. So these intimate, they're, they're intimating. Uh, events, let's say, that what do they point to? You are that. But how do they point it? By seeing what you're not. Yeah. They see what you keep pointing at what you're not until it gets very clear and then you don't need any more pointers. You're, you're, you're somewhat established and then, you know, and maybe you'll lose total interest so I joke around, but I, I'm trying to imply something when I say, hey, take my blood and uh, check it out for spirituality. You come out zero, zero, point zero, zero, zero. There's no sign of it in me. <laughs> I'm not doing this to be subtle to get to that. It's just not there. I don't care anymore. I've lost all interest in it. To me, that's the greatest success, really. I've lost all interest in this as like a and like a, a staircase of, you know, no, I just lost all interest in it. I'm just going to hear and just see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but I like explaining the pitfalls. I wish someone would have done it to, for me when I was came into this kind of stuff. It would this? I mean, what's coming through is how I really would have liked the it. I remember I used to go to places in AA. They have big circuit speakers. They're incredibly entertaining, but a lot of times you don't get anything other than humor, which is great. But you don't get an understanding of something, and after a while, you're like, "Give me, let me, you know, I want to have some meat and take it home." You know, give me. So then I'd go to certain Buddhist talks, and sometimes I learned a whole lot. I was like, "Wow." They were, there was an explaining of things I recognized that were just subtly called me and they saw them as not me. That was cool. Yeah. And then, uh, but then when I came to satsang, it seemed like there was more a description of what we are and I realized something was off with that. And then I, it came to me that what you're not is claiming to be the hero of that. And so it nudes the whole, uh, it nudes the delivery. First of all, there's no delivery because you are what you're looking for. So, you know, I just don't see it as, as a, a, a skillful means to talk about what we are. i much rather talk about what we're not. So, because I believe what we are is sort of taking itself to be what it's not seemingly in time. So I think that would be, based on that condition, the solution would be more, let's question that which we're taking ourselves to be, and then leave that 
and then you'll find out what you are. Instead of trying to find out what you are from what you're not, just find out what you're not, and you'll find out what you are. You'll find out because what you're not is not you. It's basically what you find out. <laughs> it is in one level, and then it's not. Yeah. So, you know, I went that way, and it's, I haven't had any other downloads to tell me to, you know, make a U-turn or anything. Just felt like stay there. And if I never beat anyone, I don't want to hear anyone else because everything they're saying is valid and everything. But in in this case, I just I'm like a cod salesman. I'm just gonna sell you one kind of fish. You can, you know, marinate it or sushi it, but you're gonna get cod. Yeah, because I have faith in the cod, I do. <laughs> I have complete faith in it. Yeah. And, uh, and I like it for a lot of ways because slackerness is a little bit of my nature as an action figure, as what I'm not. So the easiest off the way is high on my list. Yeah. So I can't see anything easier and softer than uh, seeing the futility of looking for what you already are. I mean, I got it. <laughs> I don't have it feed it over the head. I got it. Very clear about it. So I can, and it's better for me to look for anything else that I can see and find than fucking turn that on what I am. <laughs> I mean, I can't see how we don't realize we're the obscuring agent and how that obscuring looks. You can say, oh, we're the obscuring agent, but how, it, how, let's detail the obscurity. How do we do that? Well, you know. The observation distorts what's ever observed. Okay, that's a pretty clear thing. I'm giving everything all the meaning it has. All right, so you start getting hints about the uh, the fabrication of this, and it's and you don't want it when it's inert and dead. You want it in activity. You want to see its activity. Yeah, not you know, it's not like a you know you kill the fucking antelope in Africa. You know. And Take a picture. You want you gotta catch it in in its verbing. Yeah? You're never gonna get over selfing by knowing self. You're gonna realize there is no self by seeing self. Yeah. So the verbing of it, you wanna see the activity. So when people say trusting something, you know, trusting finite self, what does that mean? What does it look like? Well, faith in the thought system. <laughs> that's what it's, that's how it's, I see it pictured. It's an activity. It's not like, oh, I, you know, I'm trusting some, I'm tr trusting self. What does that look like? How, how does that appear? Yeah, well, in my, the way I see it is in the faith or the belief in the thought system. That's, what else could it be? So when there's these statements, I, I want to, all right, now, all right, here's the picture. Let's say you have a picture of the Colorado River. But I want to see a video of the Colorado River. I want to see it rivering. Yeah, that to me is, that to me is catching it, the essence of it, than the fucking thousands of still pictures of the Colorado River. <laughs> I want to see the Colorado, I want to see the rapids, I want to see that. Yeah, so this is, for me, I want to see what I'm not. I want to see it. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, tagging. You know how they tag sharks or something? You know? All right. Boom, 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 boom. I'm always going to be a loser. Oh, that's fucking tagged. <laughs> I'm unlovable. That's tagged. I see it right there. Yes, <laughs> they're not facts. They're assuming a fact. They're implying a fact. They're not, the fact isn't setting them loose. Yeah? They're not, they're not a reminder of a fact. They're an advertising of a fact. Yeah, you might as well get it clear. Because if you keep thinking, oh, these things are just reminding me of something that's so, it ain't so. It's, it's, that's what the whole idea of the presupposing of a non-existent thing 
it sets the non-existent thing as already existing, and then it doesn't care if you look at everything else. It get once that's a fact, it's going to distort all the looking, all the trying to get out, all this and all the knowledge, everything. Yeah, it's going to distort because that fact isn't a fact. So when you see the insinuation, the assuming, the assuming, you, it's sort of like the tail. You didn't see the, the body of the animal. The body of the animal is an advertising. It's advertising the idea that you're Paul, and then it assumes that you're that, and whacks you with it additions, yes? Paul's this, that, yeah? So now, all you can do is try to get rid of the additions, but you don't need to get rid of the additions. They only coagulate around Paul. It's sort of like that water, you know, the water's flowing, and then someone puts a rock in it, it changes the flow of the water, yeah? Now some of the water that's carrying twigs and shit go around the rock, and the twigs get stuck and then more gets pulled in and leaves, and after a while you can't even see the surface of the water. All you see on the surface is leaves and twigs and papers and bubblegum wrappers, yeah? Because the rock has produced a, like a current, yes? And so, all right, I wanna fucking release these leaves. Just take the rock out. And in the fact is, I'm saying the rock is imaginary to begin with. You don't even have to take it out. Just see that you're not the rock and you'll see all the eddies and all like this and all like that, but you'll see it from the fucking surface of the water. You'll see it. It won't be covering the surface of the water. You'll see it on a fucking phony surface of the water. And you won't be beholden to being that. You won't, because the fact has been weakened. Yeah? All that bullshit has to have the fact to land on. You can't build up these whole huge stories without the fact that you're a Paul, yeah? When that gets questioned, all everything weakens. You don't have to try to weaken everything. You take out the one, it's not even taking out of a beam. You realize that beam has been presupposed and the whole house is erectness. Its whole, its whole made up solidity is coming from us. We're distorting the observed. We're obser observing verbing, and we're seeing it as from a noun. Yeah? It's describing exactly what's happening. There's a presupposing, there's an assumption, and the pre is perfect. It means it's of time. It means the supposing happens now, but it presupposes. So the supposing is, hey, you're a Paul, and then it presupposes as if it's a fact. And now Paul thinks it's the one that's doing the selfie. It's amazing. Why not? You can see it. If someone tells you, then you have eyes to see. So the next time, hey, you know, there's a big fucking fish under the water. Now you look, and then you see the fish. Someone pointed out, it didn't, he didn't put, or she didn't put the fish there. They just saw the fish. It's there. Now you, oh, someone made, oh, look at that, and you see it. Yeah. See, you, there's a pointing at that which has already pre-stated that it's the pointed. <laughs> yeah. You see it. And in seeing it, you get a quality. Some, I don't know how it gets transferred, but by seeing what you're not, you get an intimation of what you are. I don't know how it does it. I don't care. But somehow, you see what you're not, and it boomerangs, and you get a sense of what you are, when you can never get a sense of what you are for looking for. Yeah? But you can get a sense of what you are by seeing what you're not. It just hits you. And I don't think you need that many body blows. I don't. It's not a pummeling. You just get hit a few times, and now you see something that can't be unseen. Yeah? You've seen the assuming of a fact that's not a fact. <laughs> yeah. If it's a fact, it demands wrestling and vigilance not to become an unruly fact. But if you see it as not a fact, it's a whole different procedure to dance with it. Totally different than, 
Vanquish, killing, this and that. No, it's sort of like, yeah, much more inclusive. Let bygones be bygones. Let pre bygones be pre bygones. <laughs> and then it'll gone, 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 and you'll be the being. <laughs> I wish I could just describe it, just of sometimes the flavor. I've never felt better as Paul than I do right now, just never. And all the memories of Paul, it was always something fucking nagging it, always. Physical, sinuses, trouble, whatever, agitated mind. I mean, oh, I only once did I have this, once, I remember I was in Perth, Australia, and I was visiting somebody, I was doing preliminary talks back then, <laughs> and I was sitting next to the, uh, this, this uh, kitchen nook, and they had a little stool, and I sat on that stool, and for about a minute or two, I felt the best sense of well-being I had ever felt as a body experience. It was beyond. It felt like everything was just totally okay. It was really cool. Yeah. But most of the time, it all provoked fucking action. Well, get out of it. Yeah. Mostly out of it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, this house is on fire, get out as far as you could, but always waking up in the fire in the house, yeah. <laughs> but uh, lately it just doesn't, I didn't know this attitude and outlook could be so cheery. <laughs> After all the horror movies and shit I watch, it's, I'm having a very good attitude and outlook lately. <laughs> <laughs> had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so therefore I can really enjoy it. <laughs> so what, what do you want really? I mean, why does this demand of you much? Nothing really. If you were living with a, if, if you were living with a noun before a verb, your whole life, your whole life story, the noun always preceded the verb. And then suddenly, after maybe years and years of living, some person or something finally put the verb before the noun. Yeah. Wouldn't be. It could be that simple, yeah. Noun, verb, and suddenly the verb now. Now the horse is in front of the cart, and then you feel it. You feel right. So now you see that which is happening is seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching, thinking, doing, yada, da, 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 da. Yeah? And then there's an assumption that there's a now that's pre assumed. Yeah? But as long as you've seen the verb, yeah? if you're seeing the verb from a verb, yeah? You see the noun coming after. You see that it's assumed and implied and supposedly presupposed, but you and I do the heavy lifting. We're the ones that believe it and put the noun before the verb. And then we made up a fucking language that's all it does is support the noun before verb. And it talks as if we have a lot to do with a lot of shit. We have nothing to do with it. All day. Yeah. And it just doesn't fucking make sense to us. Looking at life from a noun and trying to fucking manage and control the verbing. Maybe the best control and managing of the verb is not to control and manage. <laughs> Maybe realize all the rivers are going to go back to the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Really, can you imagine if when you were a kid and they were first teaching you in first grade, write your name and everything like that, and some some rogue teacher came in and said, "Listen, 
Never let them place the uh, never let them place the noun before the verb. Oh, thank you, Master. I'm so happy to do that. So now living, yes, seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting. No one is in any argument with that. Yeah, and you can get a sense of which comes first. The seeing comes before the manufacturing of a see or the seeing. Yeah. It comes before it. So the seeing, the hearing, the feeling, the tasting, touching is the basis. And then it's construed from a mental view that it all implies that there's a noun. So a mythical noun gets placed in front of the verbs. And suddenly living becomes, escapes us quite a lot and we have an interpretation of life. Really, we do. And then we sort of live and follow the interpretation. And I used to do it with people in recovery. In recovery, uh, they have a big thing about taking inventory, but mostly about uh, like resentment, fear, and harms unto, unto others. But I would have people do a simple, basic inventory. Like you got up at 8 o'clock, took a shower at 8.15, you had granola with blueberries at 8.30, you went to work at 9, and just watch the narrative and how off it was from actually what was happening. <laughs> the narrative that most of our attention was on was totally fucking so far off because the narratives, I, ne I never do enough. And then if you looked at your day, you were doing quite a lot. <laughs> But the narrative is, I never do enough, yes? And so you start to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I say, just stick with this. Stick with what actually is happening. You know, simple little like, like thing. Just do it for a week. And just so that you get a hit that how far off the narration is. Yeah? Completely. I mean, just like way, way off. And could you imagine, in more time, it just geometrically progresses where you're so far off you can't even, they couldn't ever even be put together anymore. And yet, most of us are taking this to be the truth and this to be inconsequential when it's the opposite. How do you feel, how do you feel things are going to become balanced here when you're living a bizarro world, you know? You're trying to get out of what you're not in, which is this idea of a noun. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to get into what you're not out of, which is the verbing of the moment. Yeah. Do you need to have like 800 classes? Just seeing that. Yeah. Seeing how that basis is off, what can you expect but everything else indicating an offness? Yeah. So, non-duality really is, there's not two. So, okay, let's go with our eyes and our ears and our feelings. There is something happening. Yeah, but there's no one it's happening to. That would be not to. You know, or as Buddha says, events are, he supposedly said, who knows what he said. Events are happening, deeds are done, yet there is no individual doing thereof. So, see, there's no denying the verbiage. Events are happening, deeds are being done, all this shit's going on, but what's, what's being negated is the idea of being the doer, which is why, a noun, yeah? So in, in this world of verbs, it would have to take a using a verb to imply the noun, and that's what I call selfing. That's why I give it a verb sense, I don't call it self. Because self is the product of selfing. Self isn't doing selfing. Selfing implies a self. Selfing is claimed to imply a self. So let's see what it is. It's selfing. It's a verb. And maybe you'll see it, and then you'll realize what I am is a verb. I am seeing. That's all I am. Not a seer. Not I was seeing, or I will be. It's just seeing. Awareness. A verb. Awareness isn't a fucking inert thing. It's not like a big chunk of awareness. It's brilliantly verbing at all time. Yeah, no time. So we're a verb. Yeah. 
All right, so now look at the noun from the verb instead of looking for the verb from the noun. Yeah, just see what happens. And so now the seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching reinforces not the noun but the verb. It reinforces being the seeing, being the touching, being the feeling, being that. Now, there's a now there's a reinforcement of really what we are instead of what we're not. Yeah? And it's built in. Conscious contact is love, basically. Constantly reminding us of what we are, which is verbing, not a noun. It's beautiful, literally. The negation of all the false remembering and all the made upness is right, is the basis of our lives. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. It's there at all times with all our shenanigans, all our circus, all, this, all the, the uh, spikes of the circus tents have to be put in that. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. And it's an activity, it's verbing, 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 verbing. Yeah. We are more of that than we are of a noun. Not two, because all there is is verbing, all there is is seeing. Yeah. So, hmm. it was cool when that hit me, because it was almost like a wind blew through the mental landscape mm -hmm. and blew all the imaginary skyscrapers down. All the nouns were blown away. It was awesome, so cool. You saw it, you know. Of course, they fabricated and appeared again, but one view of it not being there was enough, you know, to recognize the imaginary nature of nouns, yeah. yeah. This is one thing I run into a lot. The noun is derived by the claiming of verbing. And then when a person's in that act, they'll say, I'm the one that's doing that. So they'll say, Paul is doing the selfing, instead of realizing that the selfing is being claimed to imply Paul. Yeah? Well, that's a simple correction, isn't it? I mean, you don't have to kill, get 800,000 horses and 800,000 carts. You just move one, and then the rep you'll see, the you'll see it after that. You know what I mean? There'll be millions of examples of it. One correction, and then that correction gets reinforced over and over and over again. You know? So. And I'll tell you, people who don't have traveling later as a basis would scoff at it as, oh, that's nothing. I'm shooting for awakening or lightning. I'll tell you, it's much more valuable to have traveling lighter than all that other shit. Yeah? <laughs> that's truly what we're looking for here, is traveling lighter. It's given a lot of names, but if you, fed, if you had, if, you, if there was contentment and satisfaction as the basis you would, most of us wouldn't be looking any past, past Wednesday. <laughs> we wouldn't be looking past Wednesday, really. <laughs> really, I, we wouldn't. There may be few, I don't know. I think there are few and far between. <laughs> I think most people's moving towards things or are moving away from something. Yeah, when, that, when there's no moving away from something, you'll see a rearrangement of what you're moving towards. <laughs> yeah, so. But that's me, you know, other people maybe they, they use this as a springboard to multidimensional stratospheric awakening. I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> Traveling light is enough. Being able to express and receive love is pretty good. Yeah. Hold.
holding the space because you are the space. That's pretty cool. Never getting chipped ever again. That's pretty cool. Yeah, always here at all time. No matter what's hot. <laughs> going to have to spend 90 years, that ain't a bad way of spending it. <laughs> I don't see how people, I don't know, unless they believe they're going to be back again and everything is a building up, I don't believe that. So it seems like a lot of work for something that's going to end in 80 years. Yeah. <laughs> 90 years, whatever. <laughs> I mean, if the creek's going to dry up, why would you want to build a bridge? <laughs> 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 it would seem, it would, it would seem to be <laughs> the nature of the creek drying up would tend to lead to. I don't want to spend a lot of time building a bridge. You know, it just seems to. Maybe that's crazy logic, but it just makes sense to me. All right, <laughs> I've conquered. I've conquered my desire as in any of. You're dead in a day. <laughs> I'd rather see I don't, I'm not the one who has desires. And <laughs> All right, well, that's that. I'm happy. Uh, yeah, let's pass the basket. We have that. And, uh,